When you're performing the blood test using the LDX and the cassettes, remember to keep the cassettes refrigerated and right before you perform the test, pull them out for about 20 minutes until they warm up to room temperature. If you don't do that, the cassettes will be too cold when mixed with the blood and the reagent in the cassettes will give you a false reading or not a reading at all. Now, if you're caught, you forget to leave the cassette out to warm it up. A trick that I use is I take the cassette, simply put it underneath my arm, and just let it sit there for five minutes. That will bring it up to a warmer temperature. It'll be just perfect for you to be able to perform your, your test. When, you have, when you're ready to do your blood test, you want to make sure that your, uh, your needed items are all ready. You want to have uh, your, your test cassette tore open. You want to place your cassette on the table. You want to have your gauze, your alcohol pad, your band-aid, your lancet, and your two capillary tubes. When looking at your patient's fingers, you want to check all three. Some people have colder hands than others. Um, I squeeze all three of them. I'm looking for the one that discolors the most, the fastest. And so I have a choice between this finger and this finger. Since he's wearing a ring, I'm going to choose the, the middle finger. Be careful when you're using or when someone has a ring on that when you're squeezing, you're not causing uh, undue pain on their finger. So I'm going to choose this finger here. Be careful not to stroke the finger. You know, uh, as you're trying to get blood down to the area, you'll get a false reading, uh, some extra skin tissue and cells in your blood sample, and I'll give you a false reading. So you just want to apply constant pressure, make sure that the finger's ready to go, uh, and I see that one's ready. So uh, what I do is I always prep two lancets in case you get an air bubble. I'm going to try and create an air bubble so you can see what we do in that case. So I'm going to take the alcohol pad. I want to clean the area uh, thoroughly. Um, go and clear around the finger uh, nicely. Don't touch it again. Wait for it to dry. You don't want any of the alcohol to show up into the blood sample, but you'll see that it dries very, very quickly. When you're using uh, the lancet, you want to make sure that the cap is left on it until you're ready to use it. It gives confidence, confidence to the patient that it's never been used before. Uh, they'll see you removing the cap. This is a one-shot one plunger. You, do, you push it um, firmly against the, the skin on a flat surface. You want to have this be completely flat and it just is a, uh, a jab from the needle that will cause uh, uh, the blood to be drawn. On the finger, there's more nerves at the tip and the pad of the finger, and so to, uh, to lessen the pain to the patient, I like going slightly to the right or to the left. So I squeeze it again. I'm ready for with uh, my lancets, and I push it firmly, and I allow blood to flow a little bit before I start to use the sample. And now I'm going to cause a little air bubble here if I can create one. You usually get those by uh, not having it at the right angle, so I'm going to try and uh, get one there. It's not happening. So uh, just have enough, have your plunger ready. You'll see that once I've uh, got the blood, you apply the gauze, ask the patient to hold that on there. You want to be careful when you're taking a blood sample not to scrape the skin cells. If you need to lift it up and place it back down, Lift it directly off the, the skin, place it back down to the blood source, not to get skin cells because you'll get a false reading. You take the cassette. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a reservoir for the blood to go, a finger's pointing to it, and you'll see the white gauze. Apply the uh, plunger directly at the base of the gauze. Do not place it here because uh, you may run out of blood for the sample. There's reagents in this white gauze, and it's good to hold for up to 30 minutes if it doesn't dry out. You'll see here, let me place this a little bit more, that as soon as you start pushing on the black plunger, that the blood is absorbed. It's mixing with the reagents to uh, not allow it to dry in the time that it takes for it to be run through the machine. You just push it in, and your sample is drawn. Place this firm uh, in the 
in the bag that the cassette came out of, place it along the black ridge, and uh, you'll put your lancet in there. Don't seal it yet because when you're done with your cassette, you'll take the cassette out, place it in there, and if you remember to always place your lancet linear along the black line when you grab it and squeeze it like this, you will not risk puncturing your hand with the plunger. Then you take your glove, pull it off to the end, do it again on the other hand, and now you have your sample all secured. It is not required by law to have those in uh, has boxes or uh, blood kits for removal. However, if you have one in your office, it's always a good idea to go ahead and use them anyway. And that's how you perform the blood cassette test.